Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.TV's continuous coverage of EMC World 2012. This is the third year of theCUBE at EMC World. Uh, we actually launched theCUBE uh, at 2010 EMC World, and um, what we do at theCUBE, we bring you all the guests, the senior executives, the practitioners, the independent analysts, and we try to coordinate that information and share it with you, our community, and we love the services angle. Uh, I've said many, many times that, that, that customer service is the secret weapon of EMC, that, that, that nobody ever really talks about that much, but we like to talk about it, and we're here with Tony Kolish, who's the Senior Vice President of Customer Services at EMC. Tony, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you very much, Dave. It's always good to be here. I really enjoy it, always. Yeah, good to see you again. Now, when we first met, um, sort of opened my eyes a little bit to some of the innovations that EMC was doing with customer service. Think mm -hmm. customer service, it's you know, not a topic that gets a lot of headlines, but you had talked a lot about you know, social aspects, mm -hmm. innovation that you guys were doing, business processes that you were changing, how customers are interacting with you in different ways. Uh, we had Julie Larson on theCUBE right. uh, a couple weeks ago, had some similar discussions. So, and then I know you met with John Furrier too, and you That's guys right. had, some really, had some really interesting discussions around social and the things, things are, how things are changing. So bring us up to date okay. on what's new in services in, in your area, and then we can really get into it. Okay, thanks. Uh, I always enjoy having this opportunity to talk to you guys. And um, you know, you talk about services being the, un, the secret weapon, and that is definitely true at EMC. I still hear it, and it's still this passion. You know, we are the best customer services company. Uh, not just a service organization, everybody at EMC does customer service and so it makes my job and everybody my job's uh, life really easier. So we're going through though the same kind of transformation that's going on in the industry and in the company and our framework for our transformation we call Agile Support and what we're really talking about here is um, adapting ourselves to all the new types of demand for support services that we expect over the next three to five years. So like a particularly noteworthy example is, is that the expectations of service providers who are using our technology are fundamentally different than servicing our end user customers, for example. So they have different expectations. Same thing with our federal partners and customers who have different services protocols. So that's one of the primary things that we need to do is adapt to these new types of services protocols. Key to this in the middle is, is that we want to be able to service that demand in any way that, that, uh, that wants to interact with us. So e-services is a major way, right? If they want to use chat as their primary interaction tool, they should be able to do that. If they want to use social media, customers should be able to do that. If they want to pick up the phone, they should be able to do that. And in every circumstance, they should be able to speak their native language. And the third part about our agile support transformation is being able to use the right kind of delivery methods for it. That includes delivering proactive information to them that helps them avoid risk dedicated teams for our largest customers, partners in parts of the world, and so on. So that's the framework that we're using, we're calling okay. Agile Support. Okay, so allowing people to interact however they want, yep. that means you have to completely change, you said you used the term protocols. That's right. Um, uh, and, and you basically you have to create a platform that's flexible enough because it's, because it's not going to stay the same, right? That's right. This is the big challenge I think you have. It used to be you pick up the phone, and that's how you dealt with it. And now you get new channels, you know, today it's Twitter and Facebook, who knows exactly. what tomorrow's going to be. So how do you, how do you build a platform that's, that's flexible enough to maintain that agility? So we've been working on a, a you know, continuous upgrade of our entire services technology infrastructure for the last three years, and that started to deliver some major benefits. Mm -hmm. it's, this is not a new journey we're embarking on about trying to broaden the ways customers can interact with us, but you're absolutely right. We're going to be on this for a, long, for a very long time. You know, the chat thing for us was a huge success. Customers love it. And uh, the next vein of value that we really think is going, uh, that we want to tap into um, for EMC and providing to customers is social. And so we've been opening up these uh, new and expanded ways of interacting through community forums that we do with our marketing partners in EMC. And that's been just getting tremendous, tremendous um, positive reception from customers. So for example, what we can do is deliver product information and product roadmap and strategies to constituencies who may not otherwise get it from us. Like if you can't come to EMC World, mm. not exactly sure how you would get that, so we're driving a lot of that social network. We've opened up um, some new language formats for like customers in China to be able to talk amongst themselves and get that information and so on. That's uh, the, the next frontier for us. You've, you mentioned chat a couple times. And now, we first met actually a few years ago and yeah. I, I was at an analyst meeting and you gave a talk 
but we had a substantive conversation when I really first got, got into your business, one-on-one, -on -one, probably about a year ago, January, mm -hmm. so about a year and a half ago. And you said something at that time that I've used uh, uh, since then, which is that your objective with chat is to create a great customer experience. It's not to lower your cost. That's right. And you have rules about how many open chats an individual can have at one time. I, and I, I always ask enterprise service providers now when I meet with them, how many people on average do you have, uh, or customers do you have chatting with an individual, with a professional, with a tech? And the number ranges, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes as many as three to four, you yeah. know, and, and I'm wondering if that's a little You have a different philosophy. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, chat should be uh, completely as good as picking up the phone. And in order to do that, you have to have someone's attention, right? You can't do multiple phone calls <laughs> particularly well. And the same thing is true when you're chatting. So that's been our philosophy. And, you know, more customers use chat than the phone at EMC. And that really? happened at some point in, uh, in uh, 2011, which is incredible for you. Because I chat really fast. <laughs> and I get pissed when somebody doesn't chat back right away. I was like, right. hey, I'm here, exactly. I'm here, I'm here. You know, <laughs> and, yeah. and so I, I expect that. And you had, the other thing you said is the, the number one most important metric for customers, how fast, it how long it takes to resolve my problem. That's right. And so the longer I spend waiting for somebody on chat, the longer yeah. it's going to take to resolve my problem. And we might have cited some statistics that we had from there, from uh, last year, which have held true, is, is that we're solving problems on average 65% faster through chat than any other means of interaction. And it's because of that nature of the interaction. It's, you can really do that kind of, you don't do voicemail, you don't do all that kind of stuff. It's so customers love it, quick response, quick resolution. I mean, it's problems. essentially a synchronous conversation that you're having mm -hmm. with somebody, you know, even though it's an asynchronous technology. Um, okay, I, I wanted to uh, stay on this topic a little bit and talk about maybe the, we, we talked about the different touch points, you know, but, um, what really are you, what's your objective with your organization? I mean, where do you want to take this thing when you look ahead? Uh, so, you know, I, I think that we're going to look a, a lot different over the course of the next three mm -hmm. years than we do right now. And I, and I think we're going to have an organization of really following the way the company is going, which is around different disciplines of technology stacks and solutions and so on. And we have to orient our services delivery around that. So, you know, there's always going to be that need for deep product specific technical experience, but I think that, that frankly that's going to be the minority and having the context of how, that tech, uh, how the technology is being used in a particular vertical or in a solution stack has got to be much more prominent in our organization than it is now. So the big thing, you know, whatever, 20 years ago was phone home, mm -hmm. right? That was sort of a really disruptive innovation in services. Yep. And, and um, now I'm wondering, is predictive analytics, does it have a similar disruptive capability? How can you use predictive mm -hmm. analytics to figure out what's going to go wrong before it goes wrong, it goes wrong, and, and, and have that anticipatory services? Is that a, a pipe dream or is that reality? That's a reality, and um, that you're exactly right. That is, there's a lot, a lot of value there, and the big data play for us in customer service is really, really important. And uh, building on the phone home stuff, which now seems like kind of um, prehistoric, yeah. being able to extract the data that we get from our own equipment and from certain putting that together with the other data that we get from servicing our customers is a very, very powerful set of data that we can use to predict risks better, scope them, and prevent them than we ever had before, and we're really jumping on that. Yeah, so we actually, Jeff Kelly wrote a piece, uh, he interviewed Jim Bampos about this, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and you know, Jim's a pretty innovative guy, as you know, uh, so where are you in terms of actually delivering that value to customers? Uh, we do things right now called an early warning system, which was uh, an innovation past the phone home thing where we take, we use an algorithmic approach to predict the likelihood of a situation occurring at a customer. And now what we're starting to do is pull these data sets together from the equipment coming home, applying rules to it, along with the install base information, the customer is starting to be able to, you know, those projects are underway right now and those are big stuff. And, and we will, I expect we will be delivering some of that information to customers this year. And, and so two questions, so the inbound information, will social media mm -hmm. over time play a role in the collection of that information and then will it also play a role in the distribution of that information? A absolutely, it's multiple channels in, multiple channels out. People will be able to consume this stuff then however they, and however they want to. That's that, any, that's that middle piece of the agile support thing. So you guys will actually go out and, and, and extract information from social channels? Mm -hmm. um, now, does that have to be customer-initiated, customer or is that something that you actually can envision you guys being proactive and sort of 
you know, inferring from sentiment and things mm -hmm. of that nature. Is Absolutely. Really, okay. Yes, I actually see, you know, that, I, 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 don't, I, I don't look at it as that alien of a channel. There's an interaction going on between um, customers and EMC or among customers with each other, which has, you know, value, potential to the customers and, and to EMC, and we will tap into that for whether it's, it's an opportunity. Or, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, Tony, I have to ask you a sort of personal question. So you came to EMC through an acquisition of Documentum. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. How did you end up in the services division? <laughs> the uh, software <laughs> guy, right? <laughs> That's right, well I ran uh, customer service for Documentum, okay. uh, for Dave DeWalt, and then uh, when uh, Dave had a broader portfolio, he brought me along, and so I ran this uh, support for um, our software portfolio, and then I got the opportunity to run remote support. Uh, about six years ago, and then I got, we brought the whole field service and customer support organization together a little more than two and a half years ago. So it's been a remarkable ride. I mean, it's been, seriously, I wouldn't do this job any other, for any other company yeah. in the world. <laughs> it's just amazing. We've um, been talking a lot this week about, of course, IT transformation. Everybody has it on their shirts, and, and uh, it's IT, it's business, and it's you. Mm -hmm. And we've said IT is, is really, that's cloud. Mm -hmm. I mean, cl cloud transformation is the IT piece. Business is about big data mm -hmm. and finding value in big data. And the U is, you know, you guys provide a lot of cons you know, consulting and training services to help people become cloud architects, uh, maybe data scientists. Right, yep. So you're seeing those types of transformations occur in your customer base. Mm -hmm. How does that all tie back to the customer services business? The roles are completely changing, Dave. They really are. So you know, for the, um, the whole ability for a service person to be able to interact effectively through social media is completely different than picking up the phone. Mm -hmm. So there are these new roles that are emerging in customer service which are channel specific, right? So to be a good chat person is somewhat analogous to being somebody who can pick up the phone, but somebody who actually knows how to orchestrate an event on a social media site provide value through it and extract value from it as a completely new support role. And the data scientist role, that, be, that ability to start understanding all this data that we're getting and helping us be able to make meaning out of it and then put it out in a way that's consumable to the customer. These are fundamentally transformational new roles in customer service, it's just a couple of examples. Now, uh, my last question for you is, what do you, what do you guys do at, uh, from a customer service perspective at EMC World? I mean, obviously big product show, 42 new products. Mm -hmm. and. And uh, what do you guys do specifically in services at this event? So we have a huge uh, booth with uh, marketing which is focusing on all of our new services capabilities, all the new services delivery. So we just launched the, the refreshed e-services, mm -hmm. PowerLink support zone thing, and that's what we're focused on while we're here is customers really want to understand what they can do with that technality that's new, and that's what we're here to So it's awareness of the, those new capabilities, yep. a little marketing of it, some knowledge transfer, creating a little buzz, and, yeah. and getting adoption up, really, of yeah, those new services. Yeah, and then actually meeting face-to-face -face with as many customers as we possibly can. That's yeah. a always Excellent. great event. Yeah, we have a number of uh, EMC customers on this week, so CIOs, some IT practitioners, some senior, senior VPs, and uh, I always ask them, you know, if you had $100 to spend, how would you allocate it on product and service? It's always at least $50 go to, to, to service, mm -hmm. and um, everybody can relate to that, right? When we get good service, we, you know, we tip larger, we, <laughs> we come back for more, right. and, and as I say, it's EMC's secret, secret weapon. So Tony College, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It's always a pleasure, pleasure always. seeing you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back, EMC World. This is theCUBE. We're live. We're going all day today, all day Wednesday. SiliconAngle.tv. Check out wikibon.org. We'll be right back. Keep it right there. <laughs>